it's Testimony Tuesday. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome for the first time if it, you are a first time listener. I appreciate you being here and I hope you enjoy the content. As always, you know, YouTube is all about the subscriptions. You guys have no idea how much it helps. So if you like the content, please like, subscribe, click the little notifier bell, all of those wonderful things. And I appreciate you being here and leave me comments. Love hearing from you guys. So um, that being said, I want to jump into my testimony for today. It is taking place back when I was in graduate school. I teased at some of these back when I was only releasing these videos on Instagram. Um, and also let me know if you guys want me to upload those to YouTube. I can probably like try to do something to get them onto YouTube. But um, back then I kind of alluded to the fact that I had a lot of testimonies from the time that I was a grad student at UF and that eventually I would share them. So I thought today would be a good time. And, um, you know, I was putting on my orange and I just happened to have this blue blazer and it's kind of UF colorish, um, probably the closest you'll ever see to me walk, walking around in UF colors. So I thought I would revisit that time in life and share with you guys a testimony. Now, before I dive into the details, I want to remind you of a story in Genesis where right before God goes to Sodom and Gomorrah to uh, issue judgment, he has a conversation with Abraham where he tells Abraham that he's going to destroy the city. And Abraham is kind of distraught. He's like, but what if there are 50 good people in the city? You know, what if there are 40 good people in the city? And Abraham goes back and forth with God for a while to get God to say that if there is at least 10 good people in the city, God will not destroy the city for the sake of those 10 people. And I think about this passage often um, when I wonder about our world, because I look at our world and I'm like, Lord, why haven't you destroyed this place? It is a hot mess. It is a cesspool of violence and greed and all kinds of unsavoriness. Why haven't you come back and just gotten rid of us? And I remember this story and I feel like there has been some sort of intercession for us um, for the good people that are out there. And when I remember that, I stop and think about the people who have been good to me. And I remember that even though the news would have you believe otherwise, even though the things that go viral on social media would likely have you believe otherwise, there are still a lot of good people out there and we just have to find them and hopefully be them. Um, so when I first started at UF, I was 22, 22, 23, I'm not sure. I was pretty young and um, it was a very large campus. Um, it is a bit, it's a wee bit bigger than Clemson. Um, but either way, when you first attend college, any college, whether it's a small school or a large school, there is a probability that you will get lost. I'm pretty sure some of you got lost the first day of high school, right? Like you're wandering around, you're trying to figure out where this is, where that is. And it's just the larger the school, the more opportunity you have to get lost. And so I was going to this class and I could not find this class to save my life. And one of the things that I hated about UF is that their students are not the most helpful. Yeah, I'm calling y'all out. You, I would stop and ask somebody like, hey, I'm looking for this class. And they would just kind of look at me like, why are you talking to me? Um, and so I was very much put off within the first couple of weeks of UF because no one is, no one was particularly friendly or helpful about, you know, trying to give me directions. Um, occasionally I would get somebody who would, who would, you know, at least be like, I'm not sure. But, you know, it wasn't really what I was used to um, in comparison, like, at Clemson, generally, if you ask somebody for directions, they would they will either tell you where the building is or they'll stop and they'll be like, hey, you, you, she's looking for this building. Have you seen that building? And they'll kind of like try to help you find somebody to help you or whatever. They won't, generally people don't just leave you standing there like, nah, bro, that's not my problem. Um, but that was kind of the reception that I got at UF. And so I was like, okay, so I guess I'm just going to wander until I find it. So I ended up in this very strange part of campus. It's definitely not where the classes are. I think it may be part of like, maybe like a water treatment facility or something. It's definitely part 
like most campuses have this clemson also has it we call it the the the, the willy wonka building it's so like no one really knows what happens there but it's not for students and it's kind of like industrial looking um i was in that part of campus and i was like this is not where i'm supposed to be I don't know how to get from here to where I'm supposed to be or where I came from. And I'm just kind of like wandering down the road like, okay, this is not right. And I happen to have on one of my sorority jackets. So I'm wearing my letters and there was an iota who was also on this path who saw me and instantaneously realized that I did not go there. Um, one of the things for those who have never been a part of Greek life, particularly uh, black Greek life, and particularly on a white campus, a predominantly white campus. Um, the organizations typically are pretty small. And despite what you may hear, most of the times there's a lot, a lot of cross collaboration, a lot of relationship between organizations. And so we know every member of every organization. So um, generally speaking, you know, immediately when you see somebody walking around campus with letters on that they're not a member of the chapter that's local to your school so it's very easy to spot people who are either uh, impersonating a sorority member or who are visiting from another campus and so when he saw me he you know he just immediately walked over and he's like i've never seen you before who are you <laughs> um he didn't say it quite like that but um, you know, so I'm explaining to him, you know, like, I'm a new grad student, you know, I just, I just came here, this is my first semester, I have no idea where I am, or where I'm going. So, um, you know, he was like, oh, you know, welcome, blah, 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 it was very nice. And he actually called my sorority sisters for me. Um, I had not met the undergrads yet, I had met some of the graduate sorority sisters, but none of the undergrads. And so he was like, oh, let me call so and so and they can call him blah, blah, blah. So he called them. And I have no idea who he called or what they were doing um, or what happened, but like as many as they could find, all came. Like they basically sent up like, you know, the flag, like, hey, we have a new sorrow on campus, go meet her and go help her because she's lost. <laughs> and um, so I think like three people showed up and they were just like, oh my goodness, we didn't know, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, here's our phone number, call us if you ever need us. Um, and, you know, they helped me find my class. We went to lunch together that day. And I now had like a group um, automatically on campus. And so, you know, good things still happen. Um, but I would have never, I mean, I would have met them eventually, but I would not have gotten found um, if this person had not have stopped to say something. And he didn't have to, he could have kept going. Um, I wasn't in his fraternity. There's no reason that he should stop and start, you know, questioning me or interrogating me or anything like that. So um, it was one of those moments where it's like, oh yeah, you took the time to, you know, be late to your class to stop and say like, hey, are you okay? And the same thing with my sorority sisters, they could have just got my phone number. They could have just been like, hey, give her my phone number and we can link up later. They didn't have to come right then, but they did. And that's one of the things that I've experienced a lot within Greek life. I know people have their sayings about Christians in Greek life, but I will die on the hill that there is a lot that believers can learn from the treatment and the relationships that are formed within the Greek life community. Um, <clears throat> not saying to take everything because there is some stuff there that's not of God, but um, there is a lot to learn. And um, when I think back to that situation, it does remind me that there are still good people out there. There are still people who will stop everything to help a complete stranger. There are people who will still stop and come to you when you need them to come to you. And, you know, what those types of experiences not only impacted me like they helped me, but they also shaped who I want to be, right? I also want to be that person that stops and says, hey, you, you look lost. Not just because I see you wearing my sorority letters or I see you wearing the letters of another organization that I'm familiar with, but just in general, being more aware and more attentive to what's going on around me. Being on a campus or being at work or being, you know, in, in a store and you see somebody and they look lost. And I don't just mean literally lost, I mean like like lost, like mentally lost, emotionally lost, spiritually lost. Like people are lost in a lot of different ways. Sometimes they don't even know they're lost. 
Um, but I think that it's our responsibility as a person of God, as a member of the body of Christ, to be the angel in that situation that stops and says, hey, you look lost. Can I help you? Can I call somebody? Can I sit with you? Can I pray with you? Can I help you find your way? And, you know, when I think back to that situation, that is one of the things, it's one of the, I guess, bright spots in my experience at UF. Um, a lot of bright spots um, with certain people that, you know, I got to meet and I got to be around. And it, and it, like I said, it reminds me of that moment that Abraham said, will you spare Sodom and Gomorrah if you can find 10 good people? And so far, everywhere I go, if I look, I can find at least 10 good people. And that's encouraging. So my challenge to you is to find 10 good people and an even bigger challenge, be one of those 10 good people. So I hope this finds you well. And I hope that you are having a blessed week and that you will continue to have a blessed week. And as always, I will be back. Um, maybe not next Tuesday, because I don't like forcing myself to come up with a testimony. I like for it to just be natural. But I will be back for another Testimony Tuesday in a future Tuesday. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye.